travel expenses by visiting vacationresortnetwork.com. That's www.vacationresortnetwork.com. Vacationresortnetwork.com. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. It is June 2nd, 2014. June 2nd, 2014. Congressman Rich Nugent is on the phone, ready to go on the air with us. I want you to know the date because that's how you know if you're listening to a live show. Congressman Nugent often is on the air with us on these Mondays, but sometimes he's got other business that might be a little bit more important than a radio show, but he's the only elected official of any uh, any office that has regularly made it a, uh, a part of his um, service to us as an elected official to uh, pr- allow himself to be at your disposal just by calling on the radio. So if you want to call, the number is 622-9622. This morning we had a discussion about so many things, and I don't want to give him a topic if it's not where he wants to go, but the Bo Bergdahl discussion was a huge one, and I know uh, Congressman Nugent is not only a veteran, but has, I think, three sons in the military, and uh, there are some story. I mean, I, if I was a parent, I would be so happy to know that my son was coming home, if, even if he did do things that that seem to be uh, anti-American, which is what some people are saying about Bergdahl, but so I don't know. Uh, Congressman Nugent, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Larry, and, and you know, and we'll see, you know, what what the final outcome is in regards to, uh, you know, things that have been said about Bergdahl. First of all, you know, we're we're very happy, obviously, for his family uh, and for him to be back or coming back to the United States. Um, now, you know, what happened in regards to how he he got in, you know, in custody to the Taliban. I think that's a story that's going to come out, and, and we'll judge that based upon, you know, the facts. Um, but, you know, so, you know, we're happy for the family, happy for those, you know. Yeah. You know, listen, if, if I had a kid that was, was, you know, held captive by the Taliban, I would want his release, too. But at the same token, one worries about... Um, you know, what the effects are going to be on the rest of our uh, men and women in, in uniform. Uh, do they now have a bigger target on their back to be taken captive? And I think that's that's a legitimate conversation to have. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and the guys who so served with them at the time. Yeah, you know, the five guys that were, that were released, I mean, these weren't like low-level, you know, fighters. I mean, that's one thing. Uh, these were, you know, the, the top commanders within the Taliban, and two of them, you know, could be brought up on war charges for genocide, you know, against Shiites. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot of discussion. You know, Congress is supposed to be notified 30 days before anybody's released from Gitmo, um, and, and clearly that was not done. Uh, and it doesn't mean that they have to notify us all, you know, with bells and whistles, and you know, uh, but they do need to notify at least the chairman of the committee. Uh, so he's apprised. Uh, you know, we, we get briefed, you know, on the Armed Services Committee. So it would be Buck McCann, who's chairman of the Armed Services, should have been briefed. Uh, we get briefed, though, you know, top secret in, you know, in above on a regular basis. I mean, on a weekly basis, sometimes more than once on issues that are going on in the world as it relates to, you know, intelligence, as it relates to, uh, drone strikes as it relates to you know who's on the targeted list, uh, you know for, you know for drone strike, we get briefed on that, um, and that that word never leaks out. Uh, you know we 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 take an oath. You know we signed we actually signed documents that said if we did it we'd commit a crime. Hmm. Uh, so you know this this BS about you know uh, we couldn't tell anybody. That's just really that's BS. Oh wow. Uh, because I will just tell you that I've been briefed on, on issues that are so sensitive, and that stuff never gets leaked by a member of Congress. Um, 
staff isn't even allowed to be in those briefings. And, and they have top secret clearances. My staff as it relates to the armed services. But even uh, top secret brief, uh, clearances is not enough to sit in these, these, uh, <clears throat> these briefings that we have. <clears throat> and so, you know, I, this is just, I, I don't understand why they felt the need uh, to, to go around Congress. And like I said, it's not a matter of standing up there on the steps and telling every member of Congress, but it is about notifying the Committee of Jurisdiction, letting them know. So, you know, they have some, some input in regards to this. Um, I mean, I just have a real problem with the way that... That, is, that's, that may be a bigger problem than, uh, than, than the AWOL accusations, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, because... You know, th- that's the law. The law is very clear in regards to they have 30 days that they're supposed to notify us before any release of any prisoner. Like I said, all they have to do is they can do a top secret or higher briefing for the chairman and those on the intelligence committee, which I'm on as it relates to uh, armed services. We, like I said, we get briefed on things that are above top secret clearance. And that doesn't leak out. Um, so I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm really upset that this administration, once again, does things that um, doesn't have to do, doesn't have to be that way. Um, so what you're saying is you can't trust a member of Congress who has so much information. So it was a surprise to you and everybody else in Congress when this news came out. You, you heard about it the same way we did. Yes, Absolutely. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, let me once again invite the listeners. Uh, Congressman Rich Nugent on the phone. Um, the Today's date is Monday, June 2nd, 2014, so you know that you're listening to a live show or not. Um, there's a few topics in the news this morning. There, I don't know if you want to comment on some of the other ones. Uh, I guess the, the most recent one, the uh, Obama plan to unveil the, the emissions caps on power plants, is, is, that, is that also doing something without... Congress? Well, you know, it, it absolutely is, because if, if you go back a few years ago, you know, they tried to do, you know, the, uh, the cap-and-trade tax in regards to, you know, uh, emission. Uh, it failed uh, in the Congress. Uh, they just tried to do something here, you know, a week or so ago. Uh, to a lesser extent, it failed in the Senate. Um, you know, so, you know, this is his approach, is that, you know what, if, if I can't do it legislatively, I'm just going to do it by fiat and just, you know, wave, wave my, my scepter and say this is the way it's going to be. I don't care what anybody else has to say. And uh, I, I didn't realize that was the way this country was designed to operate. Um, so, you know, there, no matter where you are on, on the climate change issue, uh, end of the day, you know, some of these things, are, you know, are supposed to have congressional approval and authority. Because, you know, what you want to get is, 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 you know, accurate information on both sides of the issue. And you want to hear what, you know, uh, you know when, you have, when you change a policy like he's changing, how is that really going to affect people? And, you know, it, it's easy to throw this buzzword out, it's going to create more jobs and all this other stuff. At the end of the day, uh, let's have people testify as to exactly what it's going to do with current jobs that we have not, you know, uh, you know, fantasy jobs that may or may not occur. And what is it going to do to the people that, you know, he claims to represent, uh, those that, you know, are in, you know, are in need the most, that are at the lower social economic structure of this nation. Uh, how is this going to affect them with higher energy prices? Because remember, energy prices affect everything, not just you know, what you pay for the electric coming, you know, from into your house, but it's what goes into every business, in every store, in every manufacturer, in everything that takes place, there's a cost of doing business as it relates to energy. So, you know, we've heard nothing uh, on the flip side of this. We've heard nothing from experts in regards to, you know, what is the actual cost going to be to the, you know, the the guy who's out there working his butt off every day. Yeah. What, what's, what's it going to be to him? And we've had no discussion. It's all about this pie-in-the-sky stuff. Uh, where I'm not saying that we shouldn't have the discussion, but let's have an honest discussion about it so people really can know where they stand and how do we go about doing the things as it relates to you know, uh, reducing emissions. I, I, I just I get up. 
I just really frustrated the fact that um, that you can't have that discussion. American do, you know, do you know on, on Saturday I drove to uh, Winter Haven and I came well I came back the long way I went over to Tampa and I came back on I-75 and there was a rest area and the preferred parking space is closest to the the door <laughs> with the exception of the, the handicap spots were for it, it was labeled like this preferred spaces for alternative fuel vehicles and I didn't realize it when I parked there because I have a regular gasoline car. And I thought, well, the gasoline tax pays for the roads. I should have the preferred spot, <laughs> not, the, not the guy with the batteries. Well, I mean, and, if you think, and if you think about it, I mean, that's part of the reason <clears throat> we're, you know, we have less revenue coming in for you know, gas tax. And that's because you know, we have done a lot of things uh, by you know, the, you know, prior administrations and this administration, but prior administrations setting you know, the, the standards in regards to emissions from vehicles. And, you know, we're driving down, uh, you know, the m miles per gallon, or, you know, we're, we're increasing miles per gallon, I'm sorry, and which, you know, uh, you know, when you increase efficiency, you use less gasoline, which, you know, generates less tax. Um, so, you know, there are things that need to be done. I, there's one uh, idea out there which I think is a great idea, in regards to putting more money into our infrastructure, our roads, in that, and that's by you know we got almost three trillion dollars sitting over overseas, uh, and there's a there's an idea put out by uh, the chairman of Ways and Means, uh, Dave Camp, that would bring that money back. Obviously, reduce the the tax on that money, so we can bring it back to America. So you know that money can be used to create more jobs and create more. Uh, you know, going out and, and and inventing more, you know, I you know ideas and and, and R and D in regards to development, but you bring that money back and, and you actually the tax revenue that you bring back, the reduced amount of tax revenue, but you actually bring it back, goes into our roads and infrastructure, so we can repair some of these things. And, uh, and I think that's a great idea, because that way it's targeted where that money is going to go, not just you know go to be spent on more social programs that tend to enslave people, not set them free. Uh, so, you know, that would create more jobs. It would, you know, increase our infrastructure, improve it, things that we need to do. Yeah. I think that's a great idea that Dave Camp has as chairman of Ways and Means. Uh, let, me, let me go to the phone. Uh, again, if you would like to call, the uh, phone number is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline 622 WOCA today is Monday, June 2nd, and I mentioned the date so you know if you're listening to a live show. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. You're on the air with Congressman Rich Nugent. Uh, good morning, Congressman. It's good morning. Calling. And uh, I think our country is to a point where we're being hijacked, and it's happening by some sources other than the two parties, but the one party seems to be in uh, concert with it, and uh, a lot of members in the Republican Party. I am sorry to say this, but I've never seen such violations of our Constitution, of federal law, and, and just uh, willy-nilly disregard for our Constitution, our monetary system, and our judicial system. When you have a Supreme Court justice ruling stating that money is a form of free speech, it's rather obvious that somebody like uh, J.P. Morgan Chase has a lot more free speech than the average American. And I am sorry, but uh, nature being what it is, these people are going, or anybody more or less is going to uh, follow the money or at least not fight the money if this is way uh, things are going and until i see otherwise i am afraid that uh, we no longer have a federal government the government has us and i'm very sorry but i just that's the way it is that's the way i see it day in and day out. And then when you say, oh, gee, an impeachment or anything else of that nature would be too messy, it sounds like uh, we're willing to go along with that kind of thinking and 
the hijacking of our country and our federal government. Thank you. Thanks, Sonny. I mean, uh, you know, when you talk about impeachment being too messy, uh, the fact is you want to also win it if you go to do it. And we've talked about it before. The articles of impeachment would come from the House. But we also know that the Senate is the one where the trial takes place. And um, you, you gotta you got to know that uh, there's – there, the votes aren't there uh, to do a trial in the Senate. Uh, they don't even have to hold a trial. So, end of the day, um, you know that's the that's the stymie that we're in. Uh, I will tell you that you know Chairman Buck McKeon of Armed Services. I just read this morning that he is in fact going to hold hearings on this latest thing with uh, with Gitmo and the release of five senior Taliban leaders. Mm-hmm. Because, because we we have a right to know, you know, how did you how did you select these guys? Did were we part of the selection? I mean, what what was the thinking? And this stuff about saying, well, you know, they're going to be, uh, they they can't travel outside of, outside of, you know, the yeah. car for a year. Right. Says, do you do you? Okay, let let's say that actually happens that they can't. So do you think that now they're going to have free access to to you know, people coming and going, they're going to come there, and they're going to have free access in regards to getting messages back and forth to, you know, those uh, in the Taliban, uh, not only in Afghanistan, but in Pakistan. Do you, do you really believe that's going to diminish their ability to reach out and hurt other Americans? I think not. Yeah, right. You have to be absolutely, you know, I don't know how, how stupid you could believe that that's going to stop them from, you know, they were sequestered at Gitmo. They couldn't get messages in and out. Now they're going to have absolutely free access, free reign. They just don't have supposedly free access to travel. doesn't mean people can't come and visit them, though, and uh, pass messages back and forth outside, you know, any ability to monitor their conversations. Uh, come on. I mean, that, that's just, that is fantasy at its best. Um, I, I'm just so frustrated with that whole idea uh, of of who they released and and not even letting us know about it. So now, now couple that with the announcement that we'll reduce the number of troops in Afghanistan to five thousand by next year. The 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 um, criticism of that announcement was that that gives the enemy a way to prepare. Uh, do you agree with that? It, it does. And listen, the whole the whole mindset behind. Uh, what they're trying to do, you know, they're, they're not listening to the commanders on the ground uh, as in regards to what they should or shouldn't do, what the risks are when you do that. Uh, listen, I, I'm a strong proponent of just getting the heck out of there, but at the same token, you know, then then just do it. You know, what I'm saying, don't don't play a game and, and you know cut it into 9,800, and then the next year you cut it to you know 4,800, I think it is. Uh, and, and you, you just keep putting our people at greater risk, and I just don't know, you know, how that plays out. Um, you know what the plus to that is. You know, if you really think that you have an opportunity to to help, you know, support the Afghan government and, stay, and stabilize it, then do it. If you don't, then get out. I mean, I don't know what the halfway measures are all are all about because what, what's going to happen in Afghanistan that you know their military has come great strides from when my son was in Afghanistan in 2007. Uh, you know, they, they have done quite a bit, but they still don't have, you know, the, the necessary, uh, you know, they, they don't have aviation uh, assets to back them up. Uh, you know, they're, they're still years away from having the ability to, to really reach out and touch these bad guys. So, you know, when, when you sit down and do the metrics of it, where do you really want to be at, at the end of yeah. two years? now. Um, <clears throat> Congressman Richard Nugent is on the phone, uh, and you have a phone call, sir. Good morning. You're on the air with U.S. Representative Rich Nugent. Yes, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Doing good. This morning? morning. Good. Um, I hear everybody complain about, you know, we let the five guys go, but ain't nobody, com- you know, saying mo- not much about the soldier came home, his life was saved. You know, on one hand, we say, hey, you know, we want our boys back home. We want, you know, uh, 
no soldier left behind. But on the other hand, we saying like, okay, we did the wrong thing. So we can't have it both ways. Either we in or we out, you know. And I be thinking, you know, politicians, what is the end game? So, you know, we got all these moral standards and this and that, but it's like, okay, uh, we should have let him stay, you know. Okay. I don't think anybody's saying we should have let him stay. Uh, you're missing the, the whole point. Um, that is absolutely not what I'm saying. Like I said earlier, if it was my son, I want him home. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not going to care what the government has to do to get him home. And, and, uh, and so that's why I'm so, you know, thrilled and, and have worked so hard to try to get uh, Sergeant Bergdahl back. Uh, you know, h- how he wound up coming into captivity, that's a question yet to be answered. You know, there's, there's a lot of, in, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there saying that, you know, he went willingly. I don't know that to be the case, and that wasn't the issue for me. But the other issue is, you know, the ends doesn't always justify the means. Um, and that's on anything in life. So, you know, the law was clear. Nobody's saying, but the law was clear that this president is supposed to notify Congress in regards to the release of any terrorist from Gitmo. He clearly did not do that. He has avenues to do that in the most top secret of ways that we, like, if you've missed anything I said, we get briefed on a weekly, sometimes daily basis on issues, and I do, on issues going on throughout the world, whether it's Iran, whether it's South, North Korea, China, Russia, the Taliban, uh, drone strikes against, you know, terrorists. We get briefed, top secret briefings, and that information never leaks out. The law is clear the president was supposed to notify Congress. doesn't mean standing on a mountaintop and shouting out what they're going to do. It means you do it in a way that meets the law. And that's what I'm upset about is that there's a process in place, one that secures and will keep that information secure so it would not affect the release of Sergeant Bergdahl. But we just get cut out of the process, and that is absolutely, in my estimate, it is against the law. It is clearly against the law. Yeah, thank thank you for the call. I appreciate that. We're almost out of time now. Um, the 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 conversation obviously will be a dialogue probably for the talk shows for the whole week. Um, but but I guess the the general sentiment is exactly as you expressed it that the the, the feeling that we're happy that this this uh, sergeant is coming home, but at Absolutely. the same time, and and everything else can be sorted out about what he he did, and and you know maybe he's got a legitimate point to make about that we shouldn't be there in the first place. I think that was one of his points. Uh, but I think your point is strong also, that we can't have a, a system of checks and balances if we're not going to use it. Well, you also can't have a military that's designed to, you know, because somebody decides they do not want to be there, and I don't know if that's the case with him. Uh, that's, you know, some of the initial reports that came out, you know, a while back. So if that's the case, then, then you have a problem because, you know, it's not up to a vote when, you know, my sons were sent to Iraq and Afghanistan. They didn't have a vote in it. You know, they, they joined a the military, raised the right hand to support and defend. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, Congressman, thank you so much for being on the air as you do. It, it really okay. is great that, that our listeners are able to chat with you about these things. Um, Thanks. Be I, safe. Have, have a great week, and, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks again, Larry. Thank you. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. The method of getting Bo Bergdahl out of captivity in Afghanistan, trading five Taliban prisoners for the U.S. soldier, is drawing criticism. Some lawmakers say Congress should have gotten 30 days' notice before the detainees were transferred. House Intel Committee Chair Mike Rogers tells Fox News this could inspire terrorists to take more U.S. soldiers.